Growth is one of the surest signs of healthy life. This is true for physical growth in plants, but it is no different when it comes to growth and grace in believers. Growth should therefore be expected in every Christian. In nature, growth stops at a certain point and decay sets in. But in the believer's life, there should be growth until his life ends. Let us briefly reflect on this in three points in connection with 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be the glory, both now and forever. Amen. First, what is growth? Growth is not directly related to age. Someone may be of advanced age and have been converted for a long time and yet is still be an undeveloped child spiritually. Some of the Hebrew believers were like that. They were still stumbling over the Christian alphabet when they should have been teachers and still needed milk when they should have been given solid food as we read that in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. Growth does not necessarily have anything to do with what we do. There may be a great deal of earnestness and activity, but still no growth. The Ephesian Christians are a sad example in this. In the beginning, when the Apostle Paul wrote his letter to them, they were in a very good spiritual condition. But later, when the Lord Jesus wrote to them through John, Although he could acknowledge their works, efforts, and perseverance, he also had to say, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. Growth does not even depend on our knowledge. Our mental development can leave our spiritual development far behind. One can acquire many truths in a short time. But that doesn't mean one has grown. This is the problem the Corinthians had. They thought they were wise and wanted to be teachers, but were actually ignorant, carnal, and children in the faith. Pure knowledge puffs up, but love edifies. So growth is entirely a matter of what we are. In chapter 1, Peter describes what growth is. It has to do with diligence, determination, self-control, perseverance, a God-centered life characterized by love. These things are to be in us. They are to be produced in us in the power of the Holy Spirit so that they become an integral part of us. The characteristics of the wonderful life of Christ should come out. So growth is a matter of character. As we grow, we become more and more like Christ. Let us ask ourselves, is this kind of growth seen in me? Is there a stable development of Christian character underlying my activities and my increasing knowledge of the Bible? We should not answer these questions lightly. But on the other hand, we should not be too occupied with ourselves either. If we occupy ourselves with Christ, it will change us. Second, in what do we grow? It is important to remember that as believers we are in the grace, or we can say favor, of God. Therefore, we are told through the Apostle Peter to grow in grace. Unfortunately, there are many Christians who suffer from living in a legalistic atmosphere. They live and do everything according to regulations. You cannot expect to grow if you are so imprisoned and do not know the freedom of grace. Freedom in this sense doesn't mean that we do whatever we want, whenever we want. For the grace of God that brings salvation teaches us in Titus chapter 2, verse 12, that denying ungodliness and worldly lust we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. We realize what a real life for Christ is, denying the attractions of the world and thus growing in grace. Third, how do we grow? 
as in natural life, it is in spiritual life. If you want to grow, you must eat good food. Good food, not nobles and nor any other worldly nonsense. We also need to take time to digest, to think about what we read and how we can apply that in our lives. It is also important to speak to the Lord about these things in prayer, that he might change us and help us to put them into practice in our lives. The food of the Christian is, in one word, Christ. The most important thing is to know the Lord Jesus Christ himself and to enjoy this holy intimacy, which can be achieved only through a daily life in his presence. Then, little by little, we will discover and appreciate more and more his manifold glories. This will change us, and this is spiritual growth.